Amazing stories of someone who had morals. Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners. Never vacillated to say what's right. His conviction in Islam was eternally bright. Was eternally bright. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد My dear and respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته and welcome to our new episode from our show and our series The Amazing Stories from the Quran and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and today we are actually talking about another story that was reported by Imam Bukhari as well as Imam Muslim. And actually to be more precise, we will be addressing two different stories. One of them is a story of a man and the other one is a story of a woman. The common thing between them is the major events of the story itself. So it's the same idea and that is why we are addressing them in one same episode altogether. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم told us بينما رجل يمشي there was a man once that was walking and that's in Sahih Bukhari in Sahih Muslim a different story غفر لموميسة الموميسة was forgiven by Allah سبحانه وتعالى what's a موميسة a موميسة is a woman that practices Zina, meaning adultery, والعياذ بالله. Not only that, she actually takes money for that. Meaning she uses adultery as a business. And in the other narration of the hadith, imra'atan baghiyan. A woman that was baghi, which is exactly the same meaning as mumis, a woman that practices adultery and takes money for that. So this is a person that not only makes and falls into a major sin, she does it again and again and she does it on a regular basis and it's actually her life. She makes money like that. She lives out of that. So we are talking about a person who had mountains of sins over her shoulder. However, the Prophet ﷺ is telling us she was forgiven. How did that happen? Let's look into that. He said والسلام, concerning the first one, the man, فَاشْتَدَّ عَلَيْهِ العطش فاشتد عليه العطش Suddenly the man felt very thirsty. He was so thirsty that he was scared for his own life and for his health and for his safety. فنزل بئرا فشرب منها ثم خرج. الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى brought a solution to him. He suddenly passed by a well, بئر, that had water inside. So he went down inside the well and he was able to drink water and to come out and alhamdulillah he felt safe after that. He felt better and he was about to leave and to continue his trip because it seems that he was actually on a trip. He said alayhi salatu was salam فَنَزَّلَ بِئْرًا فَشَرِبَ مِنْهَا ثُمَّ خَرَجْ So he drank from this well. And by the way my dear brothers and sisters there's a lesson that we can take from this portion of the hadith, this portion of the story, which is that the one of us is allowed, is completely allowed to eat from somebody else's food and to drink from somebody else's water without their consent when in the situation of emergency or necessity or danger, meaning if you find yourself alone in the middle of nowhere and you feel so hungry that you are scared for your life, you feel that you are going to faint and you don't have any solution, any way of getting halal food and then you look around you and finally or suddenly you notice this small garden that has fruit, some fruits on its trees and then you go to the garden, you knock at the door of the house next to it to seek people help and permission and no one answers what are you going to do in Islam 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the right without their consent, without the owner's consent, to go and to take some fruits and to eat until the emergency and the danger is away. But that is of course limited with the frame and within the frame of need, meaning it doesn't allow you to take a bag and to fill up all the fruits and to take the food to your family as well. No, it's only for you until you feel that alhamdulillah, the situation of danger is out, then after that it becomes haram and non-licit exactly as it was before. And it shows us also, my dear brothers and sisters, the importance as well as the permission of making wells or any other source of water. You can make a source of water in the middle of nowhere, on the streets, that's completely allowed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the right to do so. Why? Because first of all, it's good for your own benefit. Let's say if you are using it, you come wash your things over there or anything like that. And even better than that, if you plan to do it and if you intend to do it, your intention behind it is to get the thawab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Getting the reward. You intend it as being a sadaqa jariyah, a running charity. The Prophet ﷺ told us that one of the actions that will remain running after death and will keep bringing us rewards, although we are in our grave, is what? Sadaqa jariyah, sadaqatun jariyah, a charity that keeps running. Meaning, for example, if someone, as we have said, puts a source of water in the street, if someone builds a hospital or a masjid for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he dies, every single person that will benefit from that hospital, mosque, anything that's beneficial for people, will continue bring, bringing the person rewards after their death, exactly as if they were present and continuing to do the good actions. My dear brothers and sisters, it reminds us also of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His blessing in the fact that He has created water for us. Water is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا Think about if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all the water that we have, He made it ghawra. It means it would go inside the, the ground, inside the earth, and it will not come back again. It dries up. It moves away. What can we do, my dear brothers and sisters? Can we live without water? It's impossible. But subhanAllah, we are so used to this ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we think is so natural, but we got used to it. We got used to it. And that is dangerous sometimes, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Quraysh, the ilafi Quraysh, ilafihim rihlata shita'i wa saif, to the rest of the verses. Sometimes we have ilaf, we have basically the habit. It becomes a habit, a routine that we don't notice anymore. We don't notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us water while so many other people in other places cannot find water to drink. And if we don't find water to drink, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took that water away from us for a very short period of time, we will be dead. We cannot live. And then after that, think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He gives us the opportunity to bring that water out of our body. As one of the scholars once came to a ruler, a very rich ruler that was a tyrant and he wanted to remind him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, what do you think? What if you didn't find any water? What if you didn't find any water for many days? Would you give half of your wealth to be able to have one cup of water to drink it? He said, yes, of course. Otherwise, I cannot live. And then he said, what if you 
do not feel able because you are ill or any other reason, you can't get that water out of your body anymore. It cannot come out. Would you give the other half of your wealth to be able to get it out? He said, yes, of course. Otherwise, I will die. He said, see, so that's more important than all the wealth that you have. So you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are grateful to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after that, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, فَإِذَا هُوَ بِكَلْبٍ يَلْهَثُ فَإِذَا هُوَ بِكَلْبٍ يَلْهَثُ Suddenly, before leaving, before moving away from that well, he saw a dog that was يَلْهَثُ meaning his tongue was coming out of his mouth because of the extreme state in which he was. He was very thirsty. The dog was very thirsty. يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَى من العطش. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he saw a dog that was very thirsty. He was so thirsty to the point that he was eating the clay. A thara means the sand that's wet, meaning something like a clay. He's trying to eat it to be able to take away the humidity from it, to be able to survive a little bit. And as for the woman, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, رَأَتْ كَلْبًا فِي يَوْمٍ حَارٍ يُطِيفُ بِبِئْرٍ She saw a man or she saw a dog in a very hot day that was turning around a well. So the dog was very thirsty, so obviously he's turning around the well because he wants to get there, he wants to get inside and get some of the water. But he was not able to do so. قَدْ أَدْلَعَ لِسَانَهُ مِنَ الْعَطَشِ He was bringing his tongue out because of the state in which he was. He was very thirsty. And in the other narration, مَرَّتْ بِكَلْبٍ عَلَى رَأْسِ رَكِيٍ يَلْهَثُ كَادَ يَقْتُلُهُ الْعَطَشِ in the other narration, she actually passed by a well and she found this dog that was very thirsty. That was very thirsty. And he was about to die because of his state. And he was just in front of the well and he could not get the water out of there. So here we have to notice that the Prophet ﷺ is making a small distinction and a small difference between the situation of the man and the situation of the woman. The situation of the man is much harder in this story. Why? Because himself, he was very thirsty. As for the woman, she was not thirsty. She was just passing by and she saw this well. And then after that, she saw the dog and she was very concerned by the situation. Let's see what happened right after that. But that will be after our break, inshallah ta'ala. Stay with us. Wassalamu alaikum. His conviction in Islam was eternally bright, was eternally bright. Those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, for those who want to enter the Jannah, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers. And that's why we need to learn and we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. And this is knowledge that we need to learn. That's why we're spending more time to look into the verses and to the meanings of the verses in depth so that we can get to learn from it what we need ourselves to be steadfast to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ponder over the meanings of the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His conviction in Islam was eternally bright, was eternally bright. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome back to our episode from this show The Amazing Stories and we are still my dear brothers and sisters with the story of this man as well as the other story of the woman they were passing by a well and they saw this dog that was very thirsty and he was desperate for water we have the man here who looks 
at the dog and he remembered his state before. He said, قَدْ بَلَغَ هَذَا مِثْلُ الَّذِي بَلَغَ بِي He remembered his state before. He said, Subhanallah, just a few minutes ago, I was very thirsty, I was desperate for water, and I was about to die. And it looks like, and it feels like, this dog is suffering the same situation right now. I am afraid he's going to die. And I need to do something. And that's how the believer should be. The believer should not be selfish, should not only think about himself. He should do something to assist others as much as he can. He has to think about others as we know whether they are animals or better than that if they are human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And the same thing for the prostitute, for the baghi. She felt very bad for this dog. She said, subhanallah, a dog here and he's about to die. I need to do something. Something needs to be done. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَمَلَأَ خُفَّهُ ثُمَّ أَمْسَكَهُ بِفِيهِ The man, what did he do? He took his khuf. A khuf in the Arabic language is some kind of socks that are made of leather. So it's leather socks, but usually they wear them, they used to wear them sometimes in the place of shoes. Meaning you can use them as shoes. It's socks that are very thick, very well made. You can use them as shoes. You can go out and you can walk with that. So the man, he went down. He filled his socks with water, his leather socks with water. And then what did he do? Look at this. And then he was looking for a solution how to get out of the well again because he went inside the well he filled up filled up his socks his leather socks with water and then he needs to come out to bring the water to the dog without losing the water so what did he do he took his khuf he took his leather socks and he put them in his mouth and he kept them with his teeth and then he started going up so it looks like from the story that actually the well did not have the cable it was just the water inside, maybe it was not used for a long time or any other reason like that. ثُمَّ رَقِيَ And then he went up فَسَقَى الْكَلْبَ And he gave the water to this dog and the dog was actually able to uh, drink. So this gives us as a lesson, my dear brothers and sisters, or it shows to us if we make a small reflection here, how humble he was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this man that he really wanted to help the dog. Because as we know, it's very hard for a person to accept to put their shoes in their mouth and to go up with that. Because usually shoes are very dirty and we might feel very disgusted doing that. But he took these measures. He went very far to be able to help this dog. And then after that, فَسَقَ الْكَلْبَ And he gave the dog the water that he needed. And in the other hadith, the story of the woman, he said, alayhi salatu was salam, فَنَزَعَتْ لَهُ بِمُوقِهَا فَنَزَعَتْ لَهُ بِمُوقِهَا She took water with her leather sock. She did exactly the same thing. However, she did not go inside the water. The situation was different for her. So she wanted to get the water out without going inside the water. Let's see how she did that. فَنَزَعَتْ خُفَّهَا In the other narration فَأَوْثَقَتْهُ بِخِمَارِهَا فَأَوْثَقَتْهُ بِخِمَارِهَا She took her leather socks and how to be able to put them down and then take them up again. She took off her veil, her khimar that she was covering her head with and she put it, she connected it to the shoes and then after that she make it go down inside the well filled up the water and then brought it back up فَنَزَعَتْ لَهُ مِنَ الْمَاءِ and she brought up some of the water so here my dear brothers and sisters we can notice something let's stop at this portion of the hadith to reflect upon something we are talking about a woman that was not only practicing zina she was doing it on a regular basis and she was using that as a regular and permanent job. 
What did this woman have on her head? She had a scarf. She had a veil. She was still covering her head. So it shows to us the importance, my dear brothers and sisters, the importance of hijab. The importance of hijab. That this was in the time of Banu Israel. They were before the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And still, they had this in their religion. The importance to cover your head. And this is known until nowadays. If you look at the Christians, for example, when they make a picture, when they try to draw a picture to represent Maryam alayhi salam, although we know that we are not allowed to do that, to try to represent her, but let's do with what we have and let's reflect upon it. When they make her picture, how do they show her? Do they show her without having a veil? Of course not. Maryam alayhi salam, they know themselves that she used to wear a veil and she used to cover her head. So this is part of all the religions of all the prophets. All their messages were calling to putting the veil. And this is why we tell our sisters in Islam that it's very important to wear hijab, to cover as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to do so, as well as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And some sisters might say, I will not do that. I cannot do that. Why? Because I'm not a good Muslimah. Because I'm not a practicing Muslimah. Because I'm not the best person in my behavior. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about my sins. We say, no, that is not a valid reason. The fact that we are not perfect, the fact that we are not completing some part of the religion does not justify that we will put on the side another part of the religion because on the Day of Judgment, everybody will be asked about every single part of the religion. So if a sister is not doing something properly, she, was, she will be asked about that on the Day of Judgment. But at the same time, if she was not wearing her veil, she will be asked about that. And she, if she wore her veil, she will not be responsible for that second part. She will only be accountable for that rest of the religion that she did not do as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered her to do. And we can see that in this story here. Because this woman could have said, I don't want to be a hypocrite. How can I be practicing zina so often, taking money for it and then covering my head? It doesn't make any sense. No, we say it makes sense. It makes sense because it is less of a harm to wear it than not to wear it and do what she was doing at the same time. And because at the same time also, my dear brothers and sisters, if she wears a veil, then the rest of her sins, the fact that she was doing zina, that's between herself and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least it's sins that are hidden completely from the society. She's not directly affecting the society in a negative way. Whereas the woman who dresses in the way, for example, that she makes, she causes a lot of attraction and fitna and so on, she is causing other people maybe, other men to fall into haram and she might be asked about that on the day of judgment. And remember, we have mentioned earlier in this series the beautiful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, yet very dangerous hadith, in which he said, Kullu ummati mu'afa. All of my ummah might be under the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can have hope in being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their sins. Except who? Illa al-mujahirun. Except those who do not have any problem making their sins become public. They show them to everybody. Why? Because as we have mentioned and we mention it again, Islam gives a lot of importance to the purity of the society and not only the purity of the individuals. Because the purity of the society will protect on a long-term basis the purity of the individuals. And by the way, a lot of people, they think that Islam made a punishment on adultery, on zina, as it is zina itself, which is not completely true and precise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make punishment in this dunya. I'm not talking about the punishment of the akhirah, but I'm talking about the punishment in the law, in the penal law, the punishment that has to be applied. We will see that it has as the condition that four witnesses actually witnessed the scene 
with their eyes and they saw all the details and they will come to the judge and they will say, I saw such and such person making zina wal'iyadu billah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making and imposing this punishment on who? On those who make this sin. Not only they fall in it, but on top of that, although it is a major sin, on top of that they make it even more major by making it and bringing it out to the society. Meaning, look at what we are doing. We are not shy of hiding and covering ourselves. This is what we are doing. And of course this is very bad because it's going to bring fahisha in the society. It's going to bring, bring impurity in the society. It's going to encourage evil. So again we go to our respected sisters in Islam and we remind them of the importance of covering themselves as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to do. Even if they are not very practicing, still hijab will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is a big sacrifice and a big struggle that you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will have a direct impact on your heart. However, and we will close with this inshallah ta'ala, the hijab that we want of course is the true hijab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the woman to wear, meaning respecting the conditions of hijab. Wearing hijab for the sake of Allah as a religious worship, not as a cultural sign. Because we see sometimes some sisters, they wear some hijabs that might make the sister or the person in general more attractive than not wearing hijab at all. The fashion hijab as they are known. Or sometimes we see sisters that cover their head but at the same time they wear very short skirts or anything like that. That is not something that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it actually harms the image of hijab more than it gives positive aspects to it. Because the other people, the non-Muslims will look at it and they will not see any religious side in it. They will laugh at us if we tell them that this is hijab, that God made it for the modesty of women and to keep the gender relations clean in the society, they will say, but this is more attractive than many sorts of fashion that we have. So we have to be precise in our religion and we have to do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to do to the best of our ability. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are still with this beautiful story full of mercy in which we see how Islam cares, cares even about the animals the story of this dog that was feeling very thirsty and then he was given water by this man and in the other story another dog by the woman and let's see what happened after that and we will go on with this hadith inshallah ta'ala in our next episode so be with us inshallah ta'ala jazakumullahu khayran subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh I love the prophet who struggled so hard When his mission was just a start He held the hands of each companion On shame to play with little children With little children Amazing stories of someone who had morals Spoke gently, lifting compassion banners Never vacillated to say what's right His conviction in Islam was eternally bright Was eternally bright